What do you think? Do you think it's pretty? Yes. Hello, welcome to this orange couch. My name is Kate. I am a mostly knitter, a little bit of a sewist, definitely a maker of clothes coming to you from North Carolina. This is episode 17 of my podcast video cast thing where I show you what I've been working on and what I want to be working on and all that jazz. Um, you can find links to all the stuff that I talk about as well as links to my socials. Um, if you are interested in seeing how I style my, knit, my knits, I recommend that you follow me on Instagram because every day when I put on my knitwear, I take a picture and it's my knit fit, you know. So um, there's that over on Instagram, but all that is linked down below. Um, so today I have four knitting finished objects, two sewing finished objects, a work in progress for each of those, and then I'm just going to kind of talk about my summer plans in general because um, I'm not sure which things I'm going to knit when, but I do have a plan for summer. So I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, this new thing behind me, this huge, gorgeous rainbow shawl, I did not actually knit. I went to this place called the Scrap Exchange in Durham, which they have um, just like lots of scrap fabric. I made a skirt out of scrap fabric from there that I'll show you. Um, and like miscellaneous artsy goods. They have some yarn. Um, but anyway, I found this gorgeous, huge rainbow shawl for uh, $1 and I bought it because it goes with my house. So thank you to whoever made that. I'm giving it a loving home. Um, I like shawls, but I don't wear them. So, or I, I wear them, I don't knit them. This is out of control and you do um, focus. So anyway, the first thing I can talk about is what I'm wearing, which is the Estee Top by Justina Lorkowska. And here's Baby Crawley. Um, so this top I knit out of Knit Picks Lindy Chain, which is a cotton, linen, chainette yarn. Um, I really, really enjoy how this fabric has changed as I've worn it and washed it. Um, it's gotten really drapey and loose and like softer. Um, I think that maybe it wasn't a good fit for this particular project because the neckline was already wide, but then as the fabric changed, it got even wider. So now it's like almost an off the shoulder top, but um, that's fine. It's great for hot days, which today is it's 92 degrees and summer. So anyway, I'm also wearing a skirt that I made, a Simplicity 2184, I think. Um, so yeah, all in the me maids today. Okay, so finished objects. My first finished object is the Pink Fizz by Andrea Mowry. If you're familiar with the Pink Fizz, then you probably know that it is a sweater and that it's knit with mohair to make it fuzzy. However, I had a vision for this garment not in a sweater form, but in a summer form. And so I knit this gorgeous summery version of it. So I knit it out of this gorgeous yarn that I got for my birthday from my parents last year. It's um, Juniper Moon Farm Summer Solstice. It's a sport weight, 48% linen, 24% cotton, 24% rayon, and 4% polyester. Uh, it has a tweedy, slubby texture to it, which is like so pretty. And it's really, breathable and nicely textured and it drapes well and like it just turned into a really really gorgeous summer garment. So this is knit from the bottom up. It's got, um, which way is the front? I have it facing the front. So it's got these gorgeous lace panels down the side on both the front and the back. It has a split hem. The ribbing is split so it's a little bit longer in the back than it is in the front. Um, and then how I did the short sleeves was I, um, after I picked up around the armholes like instructed for the long sleeve version, and then as soon as I picked up, then I did a round of pearls, just a single round of pearls, and then I did a four stitch I cord bind off. Um, and the reason I did the pearls was because I wanted to prevent the edges from curling under and I think it really helped a lot like it sits really nicely on my body and stays like as a short sleeve without curling too much so that's great this turned out so pretty I really really like how this turned out 
What do you think? Do you think it's pretty? Yes. So um, I knit the size four, which is a 52 inch full bust circumference, which is eight inches of positive ease on me. Um, and yeah, it's great. I've already worn it a lot of times. It's like a perfect summer garment for when I want to be like more covered up, um, but I don't want to be hot because it is like really loose and really breezy and like the lace panels are basically huge vents. And so it's really great. Um, yeah, I'm super, super happy with it. I strongly recommend making a pink fizz out of some summer yarn. It works really well. So yeah, that is that one. <clears throat> okay. I haven't trimmed the tails on it yet, so I apologize if you could see little bits sticking out. They're woven in, they're just not trimmed. You know how it is. Okay, my second finished object is the Sayori sweater by Valentina Bogdanova. Um, once again, knitting this out of a summer yarn. Here we go. Very, very pretty. So this is a gorgeous, intricate lace circular yoke. It has, I, what I, one thing I really like about it is this scalloped edging around the neck instead of ribbing. And it was really hard to do, like, cause I knit it out of cotton and um, the gauge on this is so tight. Like I think I knitted it on US ones. Um, and so I had to keep it really, really tight to make sure that it wouldn't, you know, get all wide like that. Um, and so that part was really hard, but then once I got past that part, it wasn't too challenging. I don't think all of the lace motifs are pretty simple. Um, it's got some pretty little bobbles in there, some twisted rib. It's so, so beautiful. And like looking at Valentina's other designs, like I really want to knit more of them. I think that her lace yokes are really, really stunning. Um, and so this was my first one of hers, but I really don't think it will be my last, especially as I've just been really drawn to lace and structured yokes like this for some summer tees. So um, I did modify it by doing short sleeves. In the original pattern it's um, sort of like just past the elbow length um, and so I did I did short sleeves and then I also chose a size with less ease than suggested. I think it indicates a couple inches of positive ease. I chose the size 4 which is a 42.75 inch bust circumference. My bust is 44 inches um, so it is a little bit of negative ease at the full bust measurement um, but I did that because I didn't want this lace yoke to be too loose and I didn't like the depth of the yoke um, in the, um, the sample pictures. I wanted it to be shorter and so I knit a smaller size than suggested and it did work out the way that I envisioned. I really like how the size is on me. And then I also added some waist shaping past the bust. Um, I just did I think three sets of decreases on the side there um, just to bring in the body of it a little bit uh, more. Um, and then I also did one by one ribbing around the uh, cuffs and the bottom just because I felt like it. So those are my modifications. Um, I knit it out of Hobby Rainbow Cotton 8-4 and this is the rust colorway. I was really pleasantly surprised by this yarn. Um, it's really inexpensive. It's like a dollar forty a skein and um, I when I first got it, it felt kind of like dishcloth cotton, so I was a little bit concerned <laughs> that it would not feel nice, but once you knit with it, it like it softens up as you knit with it, and I really enjoy the fabric that it made. Um, and so I actually have purchased more of this yarn because I think it's a really great budget staple cotton yarn for tops. Um, so that's great. I really enjoy it. And I've worn this several times, including when I was hauling furniture. Um, and so um, it hasn't pilled too much. Like it has pilled a little bit underneath the arms, but it really is not that bad. And so I feel pretty confident in um, 
continuing to purchase this yarn. I think it's good for the price especially. Okay. A Beck, sorry, laptop issues. Anyway, the last thing that I wanted to say about this was that it is a budget knit, which may not surprise you given that it's uh, made with an expensive yarn, but in total, I've defined things as a budget knit if they cost under $35 to make. Um, and so this yarn was $8.40 in total, and the pattern was $7.25, so it was a $15.65 knit. Yay for budget knits, and it's gorgeous. It looks so good. Yay. So there we go. That is the Sayuri Sweater by Valentina Bogdanova. Okay, my next finished object is <laughs> I was, okay, so I was knitting the last one that I'll talk about, and um, sneak peek, you can see that it has about 300 bobbles on it, right? And so I was knitting this garment, and I was so tired of the bobbles, like it was so much work to do, and I needed a break, and I needed to knit something that was like loose gauge and easy. And I also at the same time reorganized my workroom and I found like a skein and some change of this um, um, Barocco Modern Cotton DK that I had knit a different garment out of last year. And I was like looking around for a pattern that would use that much yarn and the ranunculus is the obvious solution. And I already knit one ranunculus and at the time I was like, well, I am knitted a ranunculus and see what all the hype is about. And I still, I didn't get it. Like I knit one and it's fine, like I wear it. Um, but it wasn't my favorite thing in the world and I didn't really get the hype. But then when I had this weird amount of yarn, I was like, what am I gonna do with it? I guess I'll just knit another ranunculus and make some changes to it so that I like it more. And I think that the, that is like one reason why ranunculuses just get made. is because people are like, well, what am I gonna do with this weird amount of yarn? Just make a ranunculus out of it. And so I knit another ranunculus, and first of all, the pattern has been updated to have actual sizing, because before it was just like one size. Well, there was originally one size, and then there were two sizes. There was like small and large, and but now there's like scaled sizing. And so it has more like raglan increases than my original one does, and then I made some changes so I would like more. So anyway, this is my third finished object is a ranunculus by Midori Hirose. Um, which I'm sure you are familiar with this, but if you're not, it has this yoke and it's very loose gauge knit. I knit it on US 10s and this is a DK yarn. So it's not as see-through as my first one because the first one I knit was made with like a fingering weight, I think. <laughs> um, but anyway, so it's a loose gauge. It's got this circular yoke and then it has raglan increases um, to, you know, accommodate a larger bust size. Um, and yeah, it's like, it's quick and interesting to knit, I suppose. The changes that I made to it were, um, I still wanted it short sleeve. Like I don't love how the long sleeve ranunculuses look, but in the pattern for short sleeves, they suggest just when you separate the sleeves for the body, you just bind off the sleeve stitches. And I did that for my original one and I don't like how it looks. Like it shows too much of my armpit and like it, has a weird fluttery edge and I just don't really like it and so I set the sleeve stitches aside um, and I knit the rest of the body and then I came back to them and I like I didn't knit that much like maybe five rows and then I did some ribbing and bound it off and that made a huge difference in how it looks I mean you can see in the pictures that it looks like a normal t-shirt instead of like the weird thing in the original anyway so um yeah and then I also, I cropped it quite a bit just because I didn't have that much yarn and I didn't want to run out. And I, I barely had any left. Um, so I scaled it well, I guess. Um, but yeah, so I really like it. The yarn is 60% cotton and 40% rayon. So it's really silky and breathable. And um, it's really nice for like when it's really hot, but I don't, I don't really want to have like naked arms. Like sometimes I just don't want to have naked arms and naked shoulders, you know? Sometimes I'm fine with it, but sometimes I'm not. And it just depends on the day. And so this is great because it's like not wearing anything really on top of a tank top, but it just like covers my shoulders a little bit. So 
I don't be surprised if I make more ranunculuses and like I don't want to be a ranunculus channel and I don't want you to be like oh my gosh why is everybody turning into a ranunculus channel I'm not trying to do that I'm just trying to use my leftover yarn in a way that makes sense because I like making garments and I like wearing garments and I don't make that many accessories and they just make sense so I'm not like crazy for it I just it's convenient anyway so I took a break from this last finished object to knit this one um oh and then this is also a budget knit like the yarn actually isn't that cheap it's like ten dollars a skein but because I only use like one and a quarter but like two skeins of this would cost twenty dollars and then the pattern is six dollars and fifteen cents currently so twenty six dollars and fifteen cents so you can that's another nice thing is you can use like nice yarn that you can't really like put into a dense garment in here and it feels really nice it's good so is a budget net as well um oh also one thing to note is that the size four that i knitted is intended to be 52.75 inch bust circumference um, but I think that it might be less. It's so hard to measure gauge on this because it's so loose, but to me it feels more like six inches of positive ease, not like almost nine, but I don't really know for sure. Um, I guess I could lay it out and try really hard to measure it without stretching it, but anyway, I think that my gauge is a little bit tighter than instructed, but, um, for something like this that's oversized and loose, it doesn't really matter. So there we go. Okay. Miss Collie, what are you doing? She's licking my skirt that's on the ground. Did you, did you find a crumb? I don't know. Okay. Anyway, my last finished object that um like i thought it took forever it really didn't it only took three weeks but the thing is like two and a half of those were the yoke so <laughs> that felt like it took forever but then once i got to the mindless stockinette then it was just mindless stockinette but anyway here we go this is the celeste tea by sorry nordland wahoo look at that is it facing the correct way it is okay here we go celeste tea by sorry nordland um, this is made out of Knit Picks Kotlin in Planetarium. It came from extremely old stash, like from when I first started knitting and I like had ambitions of knitting a sweater, um, but I didn't really know what I liked and I picked out a pattern that I don't like, like my tastes have changed. And so this was just sitting in stash forever and this isn't even a color I normally wear, but I was like, I have to use it. I have a sweater quantity of this yarn. So anyway, I put it into this and like, I think it's really pretty. Like, I think this is a good color for me, even though it's kind of weird to fit it into my wardrobe just because I don't wear this color usually. Um, I'm really glad that I put it into something that's really beautiful because I will want to wear it because it's really beautiful. So, and I'm proud of it because it took forever. So I knitted it out of Kotlin, which is 70% um, cotton, 30% linen. Um, I knit the size five, which is 47.75 inches at full bust. So that is 3.75 inches of positive ease on me. Um, and as you can see, it has a zillion bobbles, just bobbles upon bobbles upon bobbles upon bobbles. And it's like so pretty, it took forever. Kind of hard to take pictures of so i feel like this is helpful for you to see the bobbles and the lace and everything like that um yeah it's really pretty um so one modification that i made to this was that i didn't do the bobbles as instructed in the pattern it had sort of this two row bobble situation where you would like knit a bunch of stitches into one on one row and then you would decrease them all out to one stitch on the next row and that took forever for me and also it meant that I had no rest rows and no rest rows is a deal breaker um, and so I changed to doing crochet bobbles and so that was only on one row I would like make the bobble with my crochet hook 
and then um, the next row I would just knit it. Um, and so they may look a little bit different than in the pattern, but I don't really think that it makes a huge difference. Um, I tried her way and I did not like it, so I switched. Um, so that was a modification that I made. Um, let me think, I don't think that I made any other modifications. I didn't, there was waist shaping included, which I did. I think if I were to knit it again, I might go down a size. I think it is a little big, but um, that's okay. It's comfortable, um, which is nice. I'm really curious to see how this um, like washes and wears um, because my experience with Kotlin is that um, at first it's kind of stiff um, and so but as you wash it and wear it it gets sort of looser and drapier and um, and softer and so right now the lace and bobble yoke doesn't really like it's a little stiff against my body and it doesn't like lay down really smoothly and so I'm really curious if over time that's going to change if it'll sort of relax a little bit um, but it's okay if it doesn't it's really pretty um, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it so um, I had said when I said I was gonna knit this that sorry Nordland is like one of those designers that is all over my favorites but I had never actually knitted any of her garments for some reason and so now I finally have and her pattern it was good like it was easy to follow and laid out well she was one that had i think it was hers that had both written and charted instructions for the yoke so if you're someone who does not like charts Star Woodland, i at least in this one had both and if she has it in both in one then i imagine that's common practice for her um so maybe helpful information for you so yeah, there we go. Those are my four knitting finished objects. Really swinging right into summer and I like it because I can knit more stuff because they're faster. So yeah, okay. Um, I'm gonna quickly go through, show you the two skirts that I sewed. Um, like I don't know as much about sewing as I do knitting and I don't feel like I'm in a position to really talk to you that much about it. Um, and so I'm just going to show you, um, and you know, I don't know, I don't want this to be a sewing channel cause it's not, it's just that I wanted to make skirts too. Um, so the first skirt that I have to show you is another Simplicity 8211, which I now have made three Simplicity 8211s and like genuinely it's just the perfect skirt for me. I think um, I like the solid waistband. I like the pockets. I like the invisible zipper around the side. I like how poofy it is around the waist. It's just great. So I knit this or I sewed this out of some quilting cotton that I got from Stitches and Giggles, which they're on Etsy and they have a website store. Um, and so yeah, this wasn't too expensive because it was quilting cotton and it was on sale. And it's got these little cats all over it. Look at those little cats. They are so cute. I think these two here would be a nice pair. Yeah, this is a good pair. So anyway, um, yeah, this is my third one. I have fabric for a fourth one. Like, I feel like this is just my default knee length skirt, honestly. And it was the first one I made, but it worked out so well. Um, I've gotten better at like finishing my edges and things like that with like um, zigzag stitches and whatnot. I do, I'm gonna get a serger. Like I'm working in the, the school year, so I'm a PhD student in Epi if you don't know that. Um, and during the school year I work, do research work for 15 hours a week and I get paid for that. And over the summer I'm working 32 hours a week instead. I needed to leave some time for um, myself during the week. Could not do 40 hours. I haven't taken a break in years. Anyway, um, so I have more money where I should. I didn't get paid, that's a whole thing. Anyway, um, so when I start getting paid for my 32 hours a week, I will have more money so I'm gonna buy a serger so I can do edges faster and stuff because that is testing my patience. So there we go, there's that. And then, I knit a new kind of skirt, 
McCall's was having a pattern sale. So they were ha they had like paper patterns for like six bucks a pop. It was great. And so I got a few different patterns to try out. And so this one, let me just fold that beep over. This one is a wrap skirt. Um, sort of below knee length, midi length on me. Um, I got, this is a mystery fabric. I don't know what it is. It feels like maybe a cotton linen blend to me. Um, I don't know, but I got it from the scrap exchange in Durham. And so they have unidentified fabric and the, the fabric was $6 for, um, all of it. And, um, I used almost all of it. In fact, I added pockets to this. There were not pockets originally. Um, and one, one side of one pocket is made with a different fabric <laughs> because I ran out of fabric. The other pocket is normal. But um, yeah, so I, I did add side seam pockets to this. Um, this was my first time doing um, any like darts of any kind there's darts on the back like from the butt to the waist there's two um, this is my first time doing a buttonhole there's a little little buttonhole in the waistband for you to draw the this tie through um, first time adding pockets to something that didn't already have pockets so it was some firsts and it's really nice it's definitely a skirt that I can wear in like more of a professional setting because I really want to knit or sew stu stupid skirts that have like stupid prints on them. But um, I also am a 30 year old woman in academia and I should probably try to dress like it. So here we go. And this was this cost like no money to make, which was great. Love it. Yeah, so it's a it's like a true wrap. It goes all the way around. Yeah, it's nice. It's cute. I like it. There we go. So there is my second sewing finished object. Okay, so now my works in progress. Um, I am knitting a sew summer tee by. Jessie May, which I was trying to decide which I knew I wanted. I got this yarn because I wanted to make a little summer tea with it, but I kept going back and forth on which summer tea I wanted to make. There's the Rift Tea by Jacqueline Seaslack. There's the Sew Summer Tea by Sew Summer Top by Jessie May. There was the Open Edge Tea and there's the Anyway, I had a bunch, but then I realized that I have already paid for the So Summer Tea. Like, I got it when it came out and was discounted. So I was like, well, I'll just make that because I own it. Good thinking, Kate. So I cast this on. I got this yarn, um, Fiber Natural Cotton True Sport. Fiber Natural is a sub brand of Universal Yarn. And um, they were having a big sale and it was like 50% off or something like that. I did think it's still 50% off as of recording, which will be posted tomorrow. So if you're interested in some um, sport weight 100% Pima cotton for like $3.50 a ball, here you go. So yeah, it's nice to work with. It's smooth and soft and light and it's lovely. So here we go. So I have so far. It's knit bottom up and it starts with a provisional cast on, which I like my provisional cast on color so much that I may like try to weave in the ends of this provisional cast on yarn and keep it as like a contrast detail underneath the hem. What do you think? But um, yeah, so it's got the fold over hem with a provisional cast on um, and then it has many sets of increases up the sides. And then I will separate front and back and add stitches for the sleeves. It's a drop shoulder. Um, so there's like increases to add stitches to the sleeves and then you do the sloped thing and then there's um, the sloped shoulder and then there is folded hem again on the edges of the sleeve 
And so I have completed all of the increases for the body. And then it says to just like continue knitting if you want it longer, which I do. Like I usually crop everything, but if it's already a crop top, I usually have to add length because um, I have to traverse my bust. <laughs> and so um, like a crop top on somebody without big boobs um, may like hit their waist, but like it has to go over the breast and then go to the waist. And so, um, I'm probably gonna like finish off this ball and maybe knit a little bit more. I'll have to try it on and see like how it's falling. But right now it seems like it's probably a little too cropped for me. I don't know. It's like right at my natural waist, but I'll have to try it on and see. Um, yeah. But I really have enjoyed working with this yarn. It's very smooth. But not too splitty. It's a little splitty, but not too bad. And um, I like the gauge of this. It's gonna be a really nice breezy, loose summer. So yeah, so there's that. I really, it's, I like this folded hem and everything too. I cast it on when I was at a pool party and I knit at a pool party. I did buy a swimsuit and swim, <laughs> but I also knit this at a pool party because I'm an addict. Anyway. Oh, this color is called Silver Dawn. I was online, it looked totally gray, but it definitely is bluish. But that's fine. I wasn't expecting it to be bluish, but it's okay. I can live with it. All right, so there's that. I also have one sewing work in progress. I am making a ridiculous prairie skirt. I, <laughs> oh geez. I just, those cottagecore girlies on Instagram and YouTube are just really getting to me, you know? And they make all these cute, poofy, tiered gingham skirts. And I was like, I want one, but I don't know if it actually fits with me. I think it does, but I'm not totally sure and I may feel ridiculous wearing it. So I went low investment. I went on like budgetfashionfabrics.com or whatever and I bought this cotton polyester blend gingham because I was like, I don't want to invest too much money in this idea if it turns out that I feel too silly to wear it. And I got um, the McCall's 8066. UD, which is, it has contrast fabric, like each tier is a different fabric in the sample, but I'm just knitting, or sewing it, I keep saying knitting, and keep, I'm just sewing it all out of the same fabric. So anyway, here's the first tier. Uh, it's got, it's gathered, it has a flat front, but it has a elastic waist, which is nice. And um, I also added pockets to this. There were not pockets in the pattern, but I've just decided, you know, the whole point of sewing is to make things how you like them, and I like there to be pockets because I don't carry a purse. So it has pockets. Um, so here's the first tier, and then um, there's a second and a third, and it's like ankle length, I think. And um, so I've hemmed the bottom tier and put the gathering stitches in. And so I need to gather that up and sew it to the bottom of the middle tier. And then I put the gathering stitches in the middle tier and gather that up and sew it to the bottom of this. And I'm kind of like, I kind of hit a wall with it just because this gathering with this fabric is very like, it's frays a lot. And I'm kind of tempted to wait until I have a serger so I can serge the edge and then gather just so I'm not dealing with all these little tiny fray bits because it's irritating and like really hard to finish. So I may just do that and just put it on hold until I get a serger. But I have the top tier done. <laughs> oh, it's so cute. I think it would, I think it would work for me. It's not like a big, you know, gingham. You know, it's just sort of like, from a distance, it just fades into the background, but up front you can see it's a gingham. I don't know. 
I think it's cute. I do like the um, the flat front with the elastic band instead of like a zip. I don't know. A zip is nice because it's like very structured. Um, but um, I think I do want to try. Someone was very helpful and sent me instructions on how to make a flat front gathered back or elastic back skirt without a pattern. Thank you to whoever that was. I don't remember your name. I'm sorry. But um, so I'll probably try that in the future. But anyway, it's cute. So I'll finish that up. Uh, cottage core. Okay. That's all in terms of what I have been working on and what I am working on now. So I'm just going to talk for a minute about what I'm going to do this summer because I really want to boost my collection of knitwear for very hot weather. I have like a handful of garments that are great in very hot weather. And I've added a couple that are great for very hot weather. But I feel like a lot of the summer garments that I have really are appropriate for late spring and early fall in North Carolina. Um, because in the summer summer, it's like 95 degrees with 90% humidity. And it's like Satan's front porch. And so I just, I need things that are like really loose and really breezy with and without sleeves. And so I have acquired various cotton and linen and cotton linen blend yarns um, to make some of these things. So I'm just going to rattle off some of the things I have planned. The Aliso Creek Top, I'll put pictures up. The Aliso Creek Top by Irina Anakiva, which is like a circular yoke lace tee, and I'm making it out of a nice green cotton. Um, that I got from Wool Warehouse, the Drops Cotton. I'm gonna make the Santa Eularia by Susanna Gauche, 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 Gouache. I'm not good at people's names. Um, it's a cute little tank top with a big lace panel down the front. These little, I don't know what they are. They're sort of nubs, I don't know. But... Anyway, that's cute. Um, I'm gonna make a retro button top uh, by Weiter Designs, Weiter Designs, the button front tank top. I'm gonna make a lines summer top by Simone Ryan, another tank top with a line pattern. Um, I'm gonna make that out of a cotton that I got from Drops. I'm gonna make a golden oak tank top. I am going to make a couple of like camisoles with really skinny straps, which I struggle with wearing in public. Like I wear them at home, but wearing them in public makes me feel weird. But the thing is, I don't actually believe that like people's bodies are bad or that I shouldn't show my body. Like I don't like the idea of showing my body in an evocative way explicitly to incite people's attention in that way, right? Just because that's just me, right? I'm not saying that's bad. I just don't want that kind of attention because it makes me feel weird. But when it is 95 degrees outside and 90% humidity and I'm trucking my little butt to the farmer's market to get vegetables, I just am hot and I don't think that's bad to wear clothes that minimally cover my body um, but um, like don't feel like I'm wearing clothes because I would rather not be you know and I'm just I'm just saying that humans were born naked and um, the only reason that people feel weird about modesty and stuff is because of culture I think. This is kind of a weird tangent, and I apologize for that if it's weird for you. Um, you can peace out if you want. Um, but anyway, I just feel like the only reason people get weird about modesty is because of culture and because of, like, patriarchal church systems telling women that their bodies are, like, consumables and need to be preserved for their husbands. And, like, that is not <laughs> natural or normal. And so I'm of two minds because at, I... I I don't like that kind of attention. I don't want it. 
and there are benefits to like being visibly religious in some ways in my mind which um like my usual dress reads that way for people but at the same time i live in a subtropical climate and i don't want to die and i just want to be comfortable and if people are looking at me funny that is their business so i'm gonna knit some tank tops <laughs> sort of a weird tangent to go on just to justify my knitting of tank tops but anyway i get i do get people sometimes in my dms that want to talk about like modesty and christian modesty and complimenting my modesty and i don't want to be complimented on my modesty um because i don't believe that that is what um the scripture meant i believe it was talking about decking yourself out in gucci So that's my summer plans. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Sorry, I got a little weird at the end there. Um, I hope you liked my clothes. I like my clothes. I'm gonna make more clothes this summer. Um, let me know if you have any questions or commentary. Happy to hear it. I like it when people comment and I can conversate with them a little bit, so. Yeah, thanks for coming over. That is what the fat squirrel says. Fat squirrel speaks. Uh, thanks for coming over, hanging out on my orange couch. Um, hope you're staying cool. I know in Colorado it snowed like a week ago, so I hope you're staying warm <laughs> if necessary. Um, hope you're enjoying the prospect of summer. I hope you have cool summer plans vacations and whatnot. Hope you're staying safe.